So I compared the stats of every single unit in the game to figure out what the best faction troop unit was in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. So in today's video we'll be looking specifically at what the best shield infantry unit is in the game. But if you guys want to find out who the best archer or best cavalry unit is, I've already linked a separate video on those topics below in the description. If it's not linked there, it's because I haven't made it yet. So if you like, you can subscribe and press that bell icon and then YouTube will let you know as soon as it comes out. Now I've looked at all the raw data of every single unit in the game to create a tier list of the top six best shielded infantry units in the game. We'll be taking four factors into consideration to decide who's the best. Firstly, survivability, their armor rating. Obviously, the more survivable a unit is, the longer it will last in battle and the more damage it will probably end up doing. Secondly, the defensive equipment it has. Since we're talking about shield infantry today, the durability of the shield is more important than the armor in many situations since if you're using shield walls correctly, your units will most of the time be pretty much indestructible. Thirdly, offensive equipment. How much damage is the unit going to be dealing with its weaponry? Can it handle enemy horses and so on? And then finally, I will summarize each and every unit we're about to go over. And there are six in total, each one from different factions. Let's start out with the best the Empire faction has to offer. The Imperial Legionary, which can be upgraded from any Imperial recruits following this path. Now since the Empire has access to the strongest armor in the game, the Imperial Legionary armor rating has a total of 187, which is the highest armor rating by far compared to any other shielded infantry. Their head, body, arms and legs are completely covered so these men can truly weather a storm in battle. Defensively speaking, the Imperial Legionaries use a fortified kite shield which has 480 hit points and provides great coverage in the shield wall. Offensively, each man uses either a sword or a mace, the mace being good against armoured opponents and the sword against non-armed. Both of these are high tier weapons. They also have access to a spear, but it is rather short at only 114 units long. However, it has a fast thrust speed, allowing them to still be able to deal with cavalry effectively. All of these factors make the Imperial Legionary debatably the best shielded infantry in the entire game mainly because of their amazing armor, though they do have a slight weakness against cavalry units. I should also mention that across the board, pretty much all of the shield infantry units we're gonna go over today have a melee skill of 130 in one-handed, two-handed and pole arms, and also an athletic skill of 130 as well. Now let's go into a very close second place. We have the Valadian Sergeant. Arguably these guys could be joined top as the best shielded infantry in the game. They're upgraded from the Valadian recruit and they have an armor rating of 163, which still is nothing to be laughed at. As for their defensive equipment, their reinforced cavalry hide shield also has 480 hit points and provides fantastic coverage. As for their offensive power, they also spawn with a sword or mace, both of which are similar in power to the Empire Legionaries, however the mace has 10 faster swing speed, meaning they can dish out a little bit more damage. The Valadian Sergeant, however, also spawns with a spear that is actually over twice as long as the Legionaries at 235 units long and therefore it makes the Valadian Sergeants much better at being able to deal with enemy cavalry. Some of the Sergeants even have a chance to spawn with the two-handed bill, which does a massive 132 damage. Overall, the Valadian Sergeant has a much better offensive capability, but it lacks that same high-value armor that the Imperial Legionaries have. But the Valadian Sergeant is much more effective against cavalry. So for that reason, I would say they were almost joint first place. Now let's take a look at Sturgia. Here we have the Sturgian Veteran Warrior, the third in our top six list. These warriors have an overall armor rating of 161, so it's very good. 
and their armor is also light which allows them to move fast. As for their defensive equipment, they use the heavy round shield which has a health of 330. It also covers a huge area which is great for protecting shieldless warriors who might be standing behind your shield wall. As for their offensive equipment, they have a one-handed axe. It has a fast swing speed of 94 and a high damage of 75, making it very strong. It is also, in my opinion, the best weapon for sieges, because axes do extra damage against gates, allowing you to break down the wooden doors quickly in a siege. Axes also do extra damage against shields as well, though it doesn't seem to be as useful. The axe, however, is the only weapon that they'll spawn with, making them less versatile than the Valadian sergeants and the Imperial legionaries, who have swords and maces. So they will struggle against armoured opponents. They also don't have any spears to counter cavalry. What they do have, however, is a broad javelin to throw at enemies. While it's still rather useful versus cavalry due to how physics works, it ends up doing a lot more damage, you'll find that since they have a low throwing skill of only 80, they're not really going to be hitting their targets unless they're quite close up. I would say that the Sturgeon veteran warriors are king of sieges, however heavily armoured troops and cavalry are definitely going to be their weakness when compared to other factions. Next, let's take a look at the Kuzates in at number 4, the Kuzate Darkarn. With a total armor rating of 160, their leg armor and arm armor is actually very weak. But considering it's the least important area that needs protection if you're carrying a shield, that's not too much of an issue. The Eastern Cavalry shield that they are carrying has 300 HP, which is rather low compared to the other shields on this list. Offensively though, the Dark Arm Spear they carry has a length of 179 units and the best damage of all the shield infantry here of 37 and also a speed of 84, making them very effective at dealing with cavalry on foot, which makes sense based on where they actually hail from. Their one-handed heavy sabre is also better than the legionary sword, but it's worse than the sergeants. They also use eastern javelins for throwing, making them a rather versatile unit that's kind of a jack of all trades. But what lets them down quite literally is their armor is the second heaviest on this list and it's also slightly weaker. So they're slow and less survivable, but they have the tools for any job. Next, let's take a look at the lands of Batania to see what they can offer us. The Batanian Wildling. They have a lesser armor rating of 139 in total. The main issue here is that they have terrible head armor with only a value of 30, which makes them rather easy to kill, considering that enemy AI seems to prioritize aiming for the upper body and head specifically. That said, if used correctly, they can still be formidable troops, because they have a huge oval shield which covers their whole body vertically, and also has a health value of 480, making them an unmovable shield wall unit. I'd go so far as to say their shield size and durability makes up for their lack of armor, if used correctly. However, in close quarters combat, once you get them to charge, they will go down a lot faster than the other units on this list. Offensively speaking, they have the same long spear that the sergeant uses, so they are very effective at dealing with cavalry. And they also use the bearded axe, which is a slightly lesser axe compared to the sturgeon veteran warriors, but still extremely good. They even have javelins as well. The main issue with the Batanians, like I said, really comes down to the fact they have bad head armor, and they're not as tanky as the other troops. Now in my worst position, number six, to end this list, and please give the video a like if you've watched this far, guys. It took me a long time to make this list, so I'd really appreciate it. But now we're looking at the Azerai faction, where we have the Azerai veteran infantry. With a measly armor rating of 123, they're essentially just staying out of the sun at this point. The main issue is their terrible head armor, which is only 18. This means that they'll get one hit killed by anything that hits them in the head pretty much. Not to mention, despite having the lowest armor rating, they also have the heaviest armor and equipment, making them really, really slow. And their shield only has 280 hit points, and their shield is pretty small as well, so it doesn't really provide much coverage or defense for them. Offensively though, they are in a good spot with the highest base damage melee weapon, the Fine Steel Long Kasakara, with a high damage of 78. Its length is a true advantage as well. However, it has a slow swing speed of 80. They also have the Drakan Spear, 
like the Kuzate faction, and they have the Eastern Javelins to throw as well. It's just really the lack of survivability that makes this unit so hard to rely on. But to summarise this entire video, the Empire's Legionary Infantry and the Valadian Sergeants are by far the best shield units in the entire game. However, they do have no range damage, but they can still survive and counter cavalry somewhat. The Sturgeon Veteran Warriors followed in a close second, being especially incredible in sieges with their axes while the Batanian Wildlings and the Drakran are still decent if used correctly, you just need to kind of understand what makes them good and what their weak spots are. Finally, the Azerai don't really seem to have many strengths apart from their offensiveness, but due to their terrible survivability, that's why they ended up being last in this top 6 shielded infantry units in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. If you guys are wondering to yourself how can I command shielded infantry in the best possible way, you may also be interested in my video guide on commanding your troops linked below. And if you want to find out my other top 6 categories for cavalry, crossbows and so on, check out the links in the description for the actual playlist where we're going to go into more detail on the other units that exist in Bannerlord. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing and the likes on this video guys, it truly means the world to me. Thank you so much for... Letting me do this as a job is pretty damn cool. I'll see you in the next video, guys.